Hi, welcome back to Holly Hobbies. Let's make this fun and easy St. Patrick's Day wreath. I'm going to be using a poof chain method. I'm going to make a big long poof chain on a roll of deco mesh and then we're going to be adding it to the wreath frame. This method is so much fun and so easy. So let's have some fun making this St. Patrick's Day wreath. My inspiration for the wreath today will be a St. Patrick's Day farmhouse wreath. I found this cute farmhouse truck sign from Hobby Lobby along with these little clovers. And I have a couple accents, some different ribbon and an 18 inch wire wreath frame. Today I'm gonna start my wreath with an 18 inch wire wreath frame. Now this particular wreath frame has three bars if you have one that has four, you can do the same method as well. For this next step, we're gonna be using some Chanel stems and our one roll of deco mesh. And we're gonna start our 10 inch poof chain. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our deco mesh, we're gonna go in about an inch and a half and we're gonna start gathering it. And then we're gonna put a Chanel stem on you're just gonna do a twist or you could do two twists like that okay an inch poofs here like that and then we're gonna put a chanel stem around every 10 inches and we're just gonna give it a twist like that and we're just gonna keep going around our deco mesh so I'm continuing in my 10 inch poofs and I'm gonna use up this whole roll of deco mesh. And this will be the last one right here. And then I'm gonna take the tape off that end. All right, so we have a whole roll of deco mesh and this beautiful tan here. I'm just gonna take that tape off the end there and the other one's off. So look at that, we have our big old poof chain and now we're gonna begin our design. Look at the poofs just keep coming and coming. All right, let's get started and have some fun with this poof chain. We're gonna start with our poof chain. We've done the whole roll of deco mesh and our 10 inch poofs and we're gonna begin attaching them to our 18 inch wire wreath frame. And look at how fun and easy this is gonna be. So we're gonna start with our inner, our crossbar section on the inner ring, and we're gonna attach this to the crossbar right there. And we have nine of them, and we're just gonna give it a couple twists at the bottom. And we're gonna go around this ring and attach them to each of these crossbars, just like that. And we're just giving it a couple twists, and you could just put it that way to get it out of your way, the Chanel stem, or pull it back towards you. And you're just gonna go around and around and around, right? Just like that. And it's okay if it slides around like that, that's perfectly fine. And I'm gonna keep going around for each, the middle section here. And I'm gonna continue around, putting it on that crossbar on the inner part and I'm just going on each side of the crossbar and I'm giving it a couple twists and we're just going to continue around this ring on the inner circle here and put one on each of the crossbars. Now I'm coming around, I've almost made it around to where I started and I'm going to just put it right over that same Chanel stem where I started and I've made one complete loop around that inner crossbar section. Now we're going to take this next chain here and we're going to put it, we're going to cross the crossbar on this first ring right here. So we're going to, I don't know if you could, there you go. We're going to cross it like that and we're going to do the same thing that we did on the inner section and we're going to put this little chain and we're going to keep going around on this outer, right around that outer 
cross section bar. And I'm gonna make my way around this outer ring here until I make it all the way around where I started. So we've made it a complete circle around the inner bracket and then we've done a complete circle around the outer and I've made it back to my starting point. So I have my next poof here. So this, the placement of this next poof, we're gonna do on, we've done one on each of the brackets. We're gonna put this on the inner bracket right in the middle. So I'm going to attach my two Chanel stems across that bar right there in the middle. And we're on the inside ring now and we're giving it a couple twists. And as you can see underneath, I'm just, all I'm doing is like this, twisting it. And now we're on the middle ring, on the inner ring in the middle between the brackets. Now I'm gonna go around with my poof chain and I'm gonna complete, and sometimes it'll start twisting on you and you just, just keep on, you could just untwist it. And now I'm going, and if it's twisty, that's fine too. It's okay, it's all will look beautiful. So now I'm finding my next inner part of the brackets. My two brackets are here and I'm gonna place it right in the center there, just like that. And as you can see, our wreath base is starting to build up here. And I'm going to the next one and I'm just gonna keep continuing in between those brackets. We're coming to the end of our poof chain. I have the last poof here to attach and we've made it perfectly around this 18 inch ring two times on the inside and two times on the outside in our 10 inch poofs all the way around. This one's coming out right here. There we go. I'm gonna go around the wreath now and fluff out each poof the way that I like it. And we're gonna make this a beautiful base to begin our gorgeous farmhouse St. Patrick's Day wreath. And we're just gonna keep fluffing and you can place everything the way you like it. And it's okay if there's gaps and spaces because we're gonna be decorating our beautiful wreath here. So I'm gonna finish getting all these poofs fluffed out and then we're gonna continue our design. All right, so for this next step, we're gonna be finishing off all of our Chanel stems that we had on our poof chain. So I have, we have ones on the brackets that are parallel with each other and we're just going to take all of the Chanel stems and we're just gonna twist them together like that. And I'm gonna get my thicker wire cutters here and we're just gonna clip that section and we're just gonna push the end there down so it doesn't poke on anything. So we're just gonna grab all the parallel ones on the bracket first. We're gonna do those first. And you just grab the whole stack there. There should be four of them, four or five of them. And there you go, you just clip that. And I'll grab this one in the middle here. So see how this one's in the middle and it slides a little bit. So we're just gonna bring this to this first bar here, the Chanel stems, and we're just gonna secure it to that bar. And give it a little extra stability there. And I'm gonna twist it about a half an inch in, give it a clip and bend that forward. And once again, we're at the section here with the crossbars. So I'm gonna keep doing this finished work on all the Chanel stems. And then here we have that middle section. I'm gonna bring it to this first bar there in the middle and secure it there. And 
and clip and bring it forward. So I'm gonna go around the wreath and finish this up. I'm finishing up the last Chanel stem on the back here. And we have all of the ends. We're pushing them down so they're not poking anything. I'm gonna flip it over and look at that beautiful base that we created with our chain poof method. So we are gonna begin building our design and make a gorgeous farmhouse St. Patrick wreath. Now my next step is I like to put a general design together. Now things always change as we go along, but so far this is the general design that I think I wanna go for. So after I do that, then I will go ahead and start placing the, the sign and that we put the Chanel stems on. So I've come up with my general design and now I'm going to place my farmhouse truck sign and these clovers onto the wreath frame. So I'm gonna start with this clover and we already had it hot glued so we can bring these forward, the Chanel stems. And this is about the general area that I'm gonna put it. So I'm just gonna bring my Chanel stems through the layers of deco mesh. And I'm going to just find a wire part of the wire wreath frame and I'm going to secure that to the wreath frame very lightly because we could always be moving things around and I'm going to take this other end and I'm going to find another wire that's close to me and go on each side with the Chanel stem and give it a couple twists so that is about where I wanted the placement on that. So then we have our sign all prepped and ready to go. So we can bring our Chanel stems forward like that. And now we're gonna bring all these through this middle part. Before we do this, actually, we're gonna do this other clover here. So the same type of thing. We had I had it placed where I wanted it like that. And now I'm gonna go through here. And something like this, it's good to have matching Chanel stems that matches that deco mesh so it's not completely standing out. But um, it usually doesn't matter because by the time you're done decorating, you can't see them anyways. But this design's real light and fluffy, so I wanted to make sure that that blended in with the deco mesh. So I'm finding a piece of wreath frame. I don't want to smush or like mush it down too hard and mess up. I want to keep it floating right there on top. So I have the shamrocks in the general area that I was looking for. I think it was like that. Ah, how did I have it now? Like that. All right. So now we're going to put our farmhouse truck. We're going to bring the Chanel stems towards the center. I'm going to flip it upside down and we're keeping it in that general area and we can just kind of get some of those fluffs out of our way and we want to find those sh Chanel stems that are hot glued to the truck and we have the end here so I'm going to hook it on the closest frame and I'm going to give it just a couple twists because I want to make sure that my sign is exactly where I want it before I twist those for good and then we'll come back and finish do some finish work on these Chanel stems like we did with everything else and this one I'm going to come to this edge this is a little longer reach give it a couple twists there and we have one more okay I'm going to flip this around and see if the sign is stayed in the same place that I want 
Perfect. Look how beautiful that's going to be. That's coming together. So when we go back and finish the back side, we'll finish off those uh, last few Chanel stems. We'll give them a couple more twists and clip them down like we did on the back with the other ones. So look at what a beautiful design that's coming together. I have my three different colors that I'm using, the two different greens and the tan, and I'm gonna cut five of these bundles that we're gonna be using in our wreath today. So I have three cut. So we have our little bundles cut here, and now we're gonna make a curled ribbon bundle that we're gonna be using as fillers in our wreath today. And I'm gonna put the tan in between the green. So I'm gonna start with the green and see how it just kind of curls together like that? Well, you're gonna take the ends and you're just gonna let them roll in on each other. And you can either start at one end and get it started and it'll stick and you could just do it like that, or you could just pinch like this, pinch and roll, pinch and roll. And we're gonna make these little bundles. So the same, this one's a little bit easier because it's not so sticky, it'll just kind of roll, but you could just pinch and roll. And we're gonna stack this on our badabra. Same type of thing. We're gonna let the ends curl in together on their own. See how that one just curled in on its own and it's just rolling towards each other. So now we could just kind of pinch it and we have it pinched and rolled towards the center and I'm putting it on my Budabra. If you don't have a ribbon maker or anything to hold it, you can use a little clip and just clip these and put them off to the side. And then when you're all ready, you could put them together and use your Chanel stem like that. You don't need a ribbon maker, but it helps to hold everything. So there we have one of our cute little bundles that we're gonna use to fill up our St. Patrick's Day wreath. So I'm gonna continue making four more of these. So I have five of these curled ribbon bundles that we've just made, and we're going to attach them to our wreath. So now we have our five rolled bundles here that we're gonna add to our wreath. And you can see our design is coming along. I always like to add a couple in this front little section here. So I'm just gonna kind of place it right there in that little, that big little gap space. And I'm gonna flip it over and you can see I have it right there in this little section. And I'm just going to find a bar that's close and I'm gonna give it a couple twists with that Chanel stem. And we have one of our little bundles placed in the front of our truck here. And that fills up that nice little gap right there. So I think we're gonna go around and just kind of place a few of these bundles. See a little a gap right here. I'm going to add a bundle right there. And just securing it with a Chanel stem on each side of the wire frame. And as you can see, it just starts filling all those spaces up really nicely. And I'm gonna add a few more of these. I think I'll add one here. I love making these curled bundles. It just adds a little extra pizzazz to your wreaths. And they're perfect fillers for any spaces or gaps that you might wanna fill in any wreath that you make. So I have four of them attached right there. And let's see where I wanna put this other one. I think we'll put this one like right around here on this side. 
attaching this last bundle to our wire frame. And now we're going to begin the next phase of this wreath design. And look at how beautiful, just adding those five bundles, just how full and fluffy those bundles made this wreath look. So we're going to add some more touches to this wreath. For this next step, we're going to make a bow and it's going to be our finish touch here. I have these cut in about 37 inch strips and I'm just going to show you a real simple way to do a bow. And we're just going to kind of go like this. I'm going to lay it like this and bring each side, crisscross it over. And then this back part, we're going to lay it flat and then you're just going to tuck it under and then see what a cute little bow that makes. Now I'm gonna use my Bodabra just to hold this little section here. And I'm gonna begin stacking it. I'm gonna pull this one a little bit shorter there. And now we're gonna stack, do that same method with some different ribbon that I have picked out. We're doing a farmhouse theme, so I always like to add some burlap. And then what we're gonna do once we get that part crisscross, we're just gonna pinch, pinch, pinch. And then I'll set that right in the bow abra. And I'm gonna start, and you can do your the, um, the bows a little bit shorter, each one as you go. And we're just gonna keep stacking all these different so I have it like this, and I go like this, like that. And we lay that flat, and we just slide it right under the bottom there. It goes a little bit shorter. Get a pinch in the middle. And I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna make these a little bit shorter there. And we'll finish off the ends here. And we're all done, and here's a pretty green. I thought it's gonna look pretty with everything. About the length of your tails here, hold it in the middle where they intersect, and that's gonna be way too big with the bows there. Or the, there we go, a little bit smaller. pinch in the center and I'm going to place it right there and I'm going to do a couple of these little guys here and we'll add one more of this little shamrocks it's going in the right direction. All right, so here's my little stacked bow that I have, and I can trim all these little ends off when we're done. So I'm going to take my Chanel stem. All right, that's gonna look very pretty as our finishing touch here on our beautiful farmhouse wreath that we have, our St. Patrick's Day farmhouse wreath. So I'm gonna take all of these off and there it is, there it is. I think this is what this is for. I don't, honestly, I don't, <laughs> I don't ever really use it. I think it's just help smash it down. So now we're going to take our bow off of this maker here and we're going to attach it with the Chanel stem. And we have all our loops the way that we want and it's gonna just make a beautiful finished touch to our St. Patrick's Day farmhouse wreath. I'm gonna take my Chanel stem and we're just gonna put it right there through the middle and I'm gonna give it a couple good twists here. And 
And look at what a pretty bow we have. Okay, so I'm gonna add this to our wreath with a couple of our last finished touches and we're about ready to wrap this design up. So now I'm gonna put the last couple finished touches on this Farmhouse St. Patrick's Day wreath, which I think is just coming out gorgeous. And our poof chain method that we did, we made a poof chain with our 10 inch poofs through the whole roll of deco mesh. And look at how beautifully our wreath is turning out. So I'm attaching our bow that we just made and we're gonna add the last few finished touches on our wreath. I'm gonna finish the ends of this ribbon here and adjust that. And then I wanna add a couple little finish little touches. I wanna add a couple of these little sticks and I wanna add one is gonna go right here and I'm just going to go through, find an opening there. And then I'm gonna put the wire, bend this wire around the wreath frame. And I think we need another one up here. And we can always adjust those as we like as well. So that's about where I want those. I'm gonna flip the whole wreath over, hanging onto the little pick sticks there. And I'm just going to just have a little wire in them. I'm just gonna bend that around the wreath frame so those don't move. I'm gonna do the same thing with this other one here. And we can always give it a little daub of hot glue as well. So we've got a couple little accent pieces here and we're adjusting all of our ribbon. I'm gonna finish this up in just a minute. And then my last couple finishing touches that I wanna add, I am a sucker for hydrangeas. I love hydrangeas. So I'm gonna add, we're gonna add a couple of these hydrangeas to our wreath and it's gonna give it the perfect finish farmhouse touch. If this is your first time watching my video, I like to secure all of my floral with a Chanel stem and some hot glue. So I just put a Chanel stem over my floral and I give it a couple twists. I'll do the same thing over here. And if there's a little piece that you can hook it through, you could do that as well. I just don't want to on this one because those could break. And this is just gonna give it a little extra security. I'm gonna have take my hot glue and just put a little dab right there. That's it. And then we're gonna use these Chanel stems to hook to our wreath. So I'm gonna let this dry and we're gonna finish up our wreath and wrap it up. So our hydrangeas have had time to dry and we're just gonna add the last couple finished touches on our wreath. I do wanna add a hydrangea bundle right here. And now that we have those Chanel stems glued on, we can use those to secure them to the wire frame. For me, it just gives me that extra peace of mind than just hot glue gunning it on its own, that it's it's secure and it's a nice quality wreath. And I have one more hydrangea. And where do we want to put this last one? This night of nice big bundle here. And I'm gonna clip this down just a little bit more. I can find my wire cutters. I'm just gonna clip that a little bit more. And we're gonna nestle this last hydrangea in. I've prepped two more hydrangea bundles here with my Chanel stems with some hot glue. And I'm gonna be attaching those bundles right here into this space down below. 
And this is gonna complete our final touches on this gorgeous farmhouse St. Patrick's Day wreath. I just love how this design turned out and look at how simple it was to make with our poof train method. And we're gonna add this last hydrangea and I'm going on each side of the bar. All right, and I've added the last two hydrangeas here at the bottom. And look at how gorgeous our design turned out today and how simple that was to make. I really hope that you had fun crafting this farmhouse St. Patrick's wreath with me today and that you'll come back to my channel and craft with me some more. Thank you for joining Holly Hobbies from my heart to yours.